Hi everyone. I wanted to put a video together to go through the mechanics of a particular partnership allocation, uh, that being an aggregate allocation or, or reverse 704C allocation. This is usually done by partnerships that have that their primary activity is trading stocks and bonds, or I think the technical definition is if 90% of your assets are considered trading assets. I wanted to go through just the mechanics of how to actually do this and what the end result would be. So just to give a simple example, we have three investors in this partnership, part investor A, B, and C, uh, one owning 50% of the partnership and two owning 25%. We have book income or gap income of $100 and taxable income of 75. We have a $25 M1 that creates the book tax difference. And just to give a brief understanding of this, when you have a book tax difference, that basically means that this investor earned economically $50, but currently he's only being taxed on 38 of it. This investor 25 is only being taxed 19. So basically these investors have a bill that's due at some point, $13, $6, and $6. This will be due through the life of the partnership. Eventually when the partnership closes or these investors leave, as of now, if the partnership were to end today, this investor would have a $13 bill that's due. Now, the $75 is allocated currently on a book income percentage, meaning that book income or gap income is allocated $50, 25, 25. So taxable income of $75 is gonna be allocated accordingly. 50% to one person, 25% to another, 25% to another. So currently this is being allocated in a way where as someone earns money proportionally, they earn, they pay tax on it. So this would create our book tax difference of 13, six and six, or our disparity of 13, six and six, which would give us our percentage disparity. One investor owns half of the book tax difference of the partnership. The other one owns 42%, the other one eight. So something to consider is that this is the first type of allocation you could do, which is based on a book income percentage. If we change the facts a little bit and say that these two investors are old investors, and that this investor is new to the partnership this year, we can presume that they that these two investors probably had gap and tax income from a previous year. So if we factor in new information being beginning gap account, beginning tax account, we can see that this investor, and these numbers are all arbitrary, these two investors earned $75 each in a previous year, but were only taxed on $50, which means that they have a book tax difference or disparity, or they basically need to pay a $25 bill uh, that's outstanding. Taking the beginning amount plus the amount that they would currently have, this investor has a total book tax difference of $38. This investor has a total book tax difference of 31 And since investor C is new this year, this investor only has $6, a $6 book tax difference. So. We're allocating income correctly, or in a way that it economically makes sense, it taxable income following book income. But the question would be, can we allocate income in a way that cures this book tax difference? Mainly being that these two investors, this book tax difference for these three will grow proportionally over time, meaning that it'll grow at a rate of 50, 25, 25. But at a certain point, these two investors will have such a large book tax difference that it may be material to them. And I can go through kind of what that means a little bit later or in another video. But the part that we're gonna go through now is basically, okay, this is option one, which is allocating it based on a book income percentage. Option two is let's see what would happen if we allocated it uh, differently, or in our case, an aggregate income percentage. So the first step of it is we're going, aggregation applies is an allocation that only applies to trading items or items that would be be capital in nature. So that would be your line eight short-term capital gain, line nine long-term, and line 11C 1256 contracts, which would be taxed 60% long-term or 40% short-term. So the key to aggregation is that can we allocate capital items in a way that would solve a book tax difference? And the reason is capital items is because if 90% of your assets are trading assets, most of your income is presumably going to be capital in nature. So the first part of an ag of 
testing to see if aggregation would work is getting is allocating your non-aggregate income or your ordinary income. In this case, we would I guess the first step would be take your taxable income and break it up into its two components, ordinary income and capital income. Ordinary income could be line one, ordinary business income, line two, rental, line five, interest, line six, dividend, line 11, portfolio, anything that's gonna be taxed at ordinary income rates. So we would allocate that normally use basically meaning take our $25 and allocate it based on 50%, 25%, 25%. That gets us something that could be called our buildup. This is our current year book tax difference related to non-trading items. So we want to see what our book tax difference is before we start trying to figure out how to allocate our aggregate items or our $50. So the first part would be determining our build up, which is put another way, our book minus our non 704C items. 704C items are our aggregate items. So once we get our build up, the second part we're going to do is we're going to add that to our beginning disparity. So we're going to take our beginning book tax difference, in this case for investor A25, add our book tax difference related to non trading items we get our tentative disparity, or we basically were saying tentatively, this investor has $63 that he needs to foot the bill for. So that means he has more gap than tax. Then this investor has 44, this investor has 19. So at this point, we have what our book tax difference is, beginning plus current year after allocating our non-trading income. Now we're trying to see how is the best way to allocate our trading income in a way that would mitigate the book tax difference here proportionally the best way possible. So the way we do that is by taking a percentage derived off the tentative. So in this case, all the numbers are positive, meaning that each investor has been undertaxed. So they've gotten more gap than tax. Eventually, if we get a situation where it's negative, we can go through that. But since these are all positive, we would derive a percent of their tentative disparity over the total tentative disparity. So their share of it over total. So that's 50%, 35%, and 15%. You can contrast this percentage, which is the percentage we're gonna allocate the $50 off of, to the book income percentage, which is 50, 25, 25, compared to 50, 35, and 15. So these two could become a little bit different. We then take our $50 and allocate it based on, and allocate meaning multiply it by the positive tentative percentage. So this puts it at 25, 18, and eight. That gets us to a taxable income allocation that's different than the one we would have had if we used book income. So we get $38, 24, and 14, as compared to 38, 19, 19. So if we look at it this way, now the first investor has $13 of disparity, $1 for investor B and $11 for investor C. Looking at the end result of this, we're basically comparing what would happen if we had an ordinary income allocation versus an aggregate allocation. If we did it using just the book income percentage, taxable income would be 38, 19, and 19. But if we factor in the fact that these two investors existed before the fund started, or sorry, before this investor came in, then they should share in the income a little bit more than the third person. It ends up being the case that investor B shares in the income more. So rather than it being 19 and 19, it becomes 24 and 14. So it smooths the disparity percentage a little bit. So instead of it being 52, 42, and a large drop to 8, it becomes 50, 35, and 15. So it's a little bit smoother of a gradient. The end result would be that each time, in either case, your disparity stays the same. It's a matter of who has a larger bill. So in this case, rather than investor B having $31 of tax that's due, he has 26. Investor C has a little bit more. But it basically gives an allocation in a way that factors in that these two investors should share in the taxable income in a way that heavier 
meaning a higher, a larger allocation than investors see. Hope this explains and was helpful. Um, let me know if there's any other videos that you would like.